22-year-old Akia Eggleston is pregnant with her second child. She's throwing a baby shower to celebrate. She got like a new dress, and her girlfriends were gonna take her out to get her hair done, her makeup done. But Akia never shows up. Her family went down to her residence and looked for her and didn't find her. Akia's high-risk pregnancy has everyone convinced something terrible has happened. So we checked all the hospitals in the Baltimore area. With the clock ticking, everyone is desperate for answers. What has happened to Akia Eggleston? My name is Sean Wilkinson, and we're here about my daughter, Akia Eggleston, who went missing from Baltimore on May 3rd, 2017. Not only is she missing, also my eight-month grandson, who actually was, wasn't born at the time. So we're actually missing two people, not just one. Akia is raised in Baltimore by her mom and stepdad. She had the, the prettiest little smile and the, the biggest brown eyes and took to her like a sponge in water. At four feet, 11 inches, Akia's noticeably petite with a big personality. Everybody always made fun of how short she was. People would always say, oh, she's short and fiery. We always didn't agree on everything, but uh, the love we share was, was very strong. Akia and her three-year-old daughter, Emery, live in Cherry Hill, Maryland, a suburb of Baltimore. But it was known for crime and drugs and not being the, the best kept area but uh, that's where she chose to live. A tenacious single mother, she makes ends meet by sharing an apartment with another single mom. Akia had a, a very good support system. Everybody chipped in as best they could or when they could or took shifts in you know, making sure her daughter got to school or got to whatever activities she was doing. But Akia is in for a surprise. She becomes pregnant with her second child. I didn't know who the father was. She never talked to me about him, no. It was one of those type of situations that my daughter and I, uh, we didn't uh, have that communication open. And the pregnancy isn't exactly easy. She could barely move. She was on bed rest uh, from her doctors, so she wasn't working, and she was in a lot of pain because she her baby was breached. Even with her limited mobility and tight budget, Akia is excited and plans her own baby shower. But I believe it was between seven and $900 for the venue that she was renting, and it was in Baltimore City. It's a lot of money for her to spend on a party. Oh my gosh, she was so excited. She was telling us about all the plans that she was gonna do. But on May 7th, 2017, the day of the party, nothing goes as planned. Friends and family were showing up to celebrate the gender reveal. But during the time of the party, she never showed up. And at that point, people got a little worried. So they packed up the, the party and they went to her home. At her apartment, the mysteries continue. The new crib is missing, and so is Akia. Then, an alarming discovery. Akia's family realizes it's been four days since anyone has actually heard from her. Her last contact was with her grandmother between May 3rd and May 4th. After that, there was no communication to family, friends, or, or any, anyone else. So when exactly did Akia disappear? At this point, the possibilities are endless because we just don't know. When Akia Eggleston doesn't show up to her own baby shower on May 7th, 2017, her family reports her missing. I'm Lieutenant Terrence McClarney of the cold case unit of the homicide unit of the Baltimore Police Department. We are investigating the missing person case of Akia Eggleston, who was reported missing on May 7th of 2017. Akia was not the type of person that would just disappear. But people would notice her because she was a small woman and her pregnancy was so far along. After comparing notes, Akia's family figures out their last contact with her was four days earlier on May 3rd. And then after that, it was dead silence. Uh, no phone calls, no email, no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram, no Snapchat. She was a social media monster. I mean, always posting something, so 
for her not to post anything or not to call anybody was just unheard of. Social media is big. And so for that to stop is also big. Akia's family fears the worst. Immediately check all the hospitals, because that can happen. Someone goes to a hospital that's not their usual hospital, and it takes some time for people to track them down. Investigators don't find Akia, but they do discover a lead several weeks later. First, we found that she had visited a bank in the Inner Harbor. Akia doesn't have a car, so she asks a friend to drive her to the bank. The person that saw her was uh, one of her friends that took her to the bank on the day that she went missing. We've interviewed all the people that she had contact with in the bank, of course, and there was nothing to suggest that she was in any imminent danger or a stress situation. It didn't seem that there was anything odd uh, that she was doing, uh, it looked like any, any regular bank transaction. Akia withdraws several hundred dollars. What could the money be for? And then the young lady took her home. And that was the last time that any one of her friends and her family that we know of saw her. The friend then reveals a bombshell. Akia was planning to buy a house with the baby's father. Come to find out that wherever they were tending to move to didn't exist. And then, of course, here comes the big question, well, who's the father? And then that's when I found out that the father was, was a friend of mine. It was kind of a shock to me. Like, wow, he's the father of my daughter's unborn child? Why is this grown man dating this, this young lady, 10 plus or more years older than she is? So at that point, it was like, well, has anybody talked to him? We know the father of the unborn child, and we have spoken to him as we've spoken to there's dozens and dozens of people. Because this case is still active, police will not share what they learned from the baby's father. She lived in a community that was, was tight-lipped. And they, they didn't take, take the strangers walking through the neighborhood asking questions. We have searched some various wooded areas in Baltimore. We've had divers involved on several occasions. Her phone was pinged somewhere in Baltimore. And that is the extent of knowledge we have from her cell phone. We still have leads that we're working. And sometimes we have leads that bleed off of other leads. But we've been working it for quite a while now. And we need some help if there's anyone watching this, which is why we're doing these shows. We need help. Despite all of the leads investigators have followed, Akia and her baby are still nowhere to be found. We don't have any, any secret information, say anything. Our investigation, of course, has turned up quite a few things. But she could have had an accident. She could have been abducted. We've been surprised at how little information has come in. And there is a $25,000 reward that the FBI put up. We know that. They said that her phone was pinged somewhere in Baltimore, and that is the extent of knowledge we have from her cell phone. We don't know if they found any of her belongings. Uh, we don't know. If, we don't know anything. Uh, and each and every day, the not knowing is is what hurts us the most. The police saying they're following their breadcrumbs. We're begging, pleading, that they would just, you know, drop a breadcrumb to the police to let them know that, okay. We know something happened. She was headstrong, but to walk away from her daughter and, and life in general, she would never do that. She, she loved life. She loved her daughter. And again, she was very excited about having the new baby. Authorities and Akia's family need the public's help. We are still working this case. We are working with them almost daily. I beg and plead to anybody who knows something to please come forward. Help our family start the healing process because every day she's not here is an open wound. Every day that she is not found is an open wound. Every day that her unborn son is not here with us is, is like slashes across the body and squeezing the lemon on top of it. Hopefully someone's out there 
and maybe there's a change of heart of some sort, we aren't giving up on that. I will never give up looking for my daughter. I will go to my grave looking for her. I get up every day with, a, with an aching heart, and we, we just try to do our best to get through day to day, and it's hard, very hard.